Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug naproxen, also known by the brand names Aleve, Anaprox, and more. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Naproxen belongs to the Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drug Classification, or NSAIDs for short. As the drug class suggests, naproxen reduces inflammation, and it can be used to treat pain. So let's talk about how naproxen works. In our body, we have enzymes called cyclooxygenase, or COX for short, that are responsible for producing prostaglandins. Prostaglandins have many different effects throughout the body. Prostaglandins help cause inflammation and fever, which aid in the healing process in our body. However, as we know, inflammation and fever can be painful and uncomfortable. Some prostaglandins can also cause our blood to clot more easily by stimulating platelet aggregation. This is when platelets form a kind of mesh that traps red blood cells and promotes blood clotting. So again, prostaglandins help to cause these things. Naproxen is an example of a COX inhibitor, which in turn inhibits the production of these prostaglandins. And fewer prostaglandins leads to less inflammation, less fever, less pain, and less blood clotting to a certain extent. If you know how acetaminophen or paracetamol works, you might recognize that naproxen works in a very similar way. The main difference being that naproxen is an anti-inflammatory, while acetaminophen is not, meaning naproxen might work better in cases of inflammatory-induced pain. So naproxen is commonly used in the management of various mild to moderate aches and pains, like headaches, dysmenorrhea, and many more. It is also used in the symptomatic treatment of some inflammatory disorders, such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, spondylitis, and more. There are many possible side effects of naproxen, so we'll just go over some of them here. We already went over some of the effects of prostaglandins like inflammation, fever, and pain, but there's another important one. Prostaglandins also help to protect the stomach and intestinal lining. So naproxen, because it inhibits prostaglandin production, can actually cause the opposite to occur, essentially causing damage to the stomach and intestinal lining. This damage can potentially lead to bleeding and ulceration of the stomach and intestine, which may present as stomach pains. Naproxen, especially with long-term use, can have negative effects on the renal system, or the kidneys. NSAIDs are commonly associated with nephrotoxicity, which may present as decreased urine output, fluid retention or edema, increases in creatinine and BUN blood levels, and more. Also with high doses or long-term use of naproxen, tinnitus or ringing in the ears may occur. This should go away once the medication is discontinued. Naproxen can also counterintuitively cause headaches, it can cause constipation or diarrhea, increased bleeding time, and much more. Just some of the potential interactions with naproxen include use with antiplatelets, anticoagulants, antihypertensives, and other NSAIDs, which may increase the risk for bleeding. Ginger, garlic, and ginkgo may also increase the risk for bleeding. Other drugs that cause nephrotoxicity or drugs that cause gastric ulceration may have these effects increased with naproxen. Due to the side effects, naproxen is contraindicated in patients with active GI bleeding or ulceration. Naproxen should also be avoided during pregnancy as it does cross the placental barrier and could possibly cause neonatal adverse effects. Exercise caution in patients taking nephrotoxic drugs, geriatric patients, patients with a low platelet count, also known as thrombocytopenia, and more. Always monitor and assess for side effects of naproxen. Be aware that geriatric patients may require lower doses. Long-term therapy of naproxen may require regular blood work to monitor kidney function, liver function, and bleeding time. You may also want to monitor intake and output and daily weights to help monitor for fluid retention. To avoid GI distress when taking naproxen, you can always take it with food. And that's about it for the basics of naproxen. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.